Shut up and sit down. Hey friends, I'm Simon. I'm Ellie. And if you enjoy our videos, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and of course hit that bell thing. That would be very kind of you indeed. And tonight, as usual, we're surprising each other with trailers for things that the other person has not yet seen, and filming our typically silly reactions. So what do we have coming up next? Well, next up, we have a movie that just the name of it kind of threw me. We've got a lot of kind of movies where we've got Batman, who's the Dark Knight. We've got the Black Knight coming out in The Eternals. And I saw the trailer for a movie called The Green Knight. And I was chatting to our friend Storm Shadow, who is a longtime viewer. Hey, Storm Shadow. And uh, he was mentioning that this is based on Arthurian legend, a medieval story about the Green Knight. And it stars Dev Patel, who we know from Slumdog Millionaire, who looks very, very different these days to back when he did Slumdog Millionaire. So I am really, really intrigued. Like, how do you create a modern fantasy movie based on the legends of King Arthur? Especially the story of the Green Knight, which is not the typical kind of Excalibur, Lancelot, mm. Arthur, love triangle type story with Guinevere that we always see done to death. The Green Knight is actually quite a weird and wonderful story. Definitely seems to lean more towards the fantasy side of the King Arthur legends rather than medieval history. So I am fascinated, but I'm also fascinated to how Dev Patel fits into that because I, I just cannot picture him as some kind of a... King Arthur's Knights of the Round Table type of a dude. So I was just intrigued enough that I figured we should just give it a go. So Sounds if, good. Yeah, it does. So if you want to see what we think about it, then hang around until afterwards. But for now... Let's go. Let's roll that trailer. Friends. Brothers and sisters. Who can... Regale me and my queen with some myth. <laughs> oh, cool. For tale. Wow. Oh, greatest of kings. Let one of your knights try to land a blow against me. Indulge me in this game. I will be deep. Wow, I wouldn't. <laughs> One year hence. <laughs> ah. Sounds ominous. Another year nearly gone already. You must seek him out. Was it not just a game? Perhaps. But it is not complete. Wow. You will find no mercy. No happy end. Why do you stop me? Me yeah, do. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You rest your bones. I'll finish your quest for you. Oh my god, how cool! And what do you hope to gain? From facing all of this... Honor? That is why Knight does what he does. Ready. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that was not what I was expecting at all, but mm. holy moly, does that look great. And um, what did you think of the Green Knight? It I love the style of it. There were echoes of American Gods in some parts of it, I felt like, with the imagery that they were using and mm. how some of the scenes just, they were put together almost like paintings, just, they were so iconic. And I liked the way it kind of paused on it, just so you could take it in. 
Um, but with the symbolism and things just unexpectedly being on fire briefly, I, I loved how much depth there was to it, which you also get in American Gods. Just, and it was so dark and bleak, but also so rich and kind of eerie. I really like that. Yeah. You know, yeah, I, I agree. And and I just vividly remember watching this, how growing up being obsessed with the legends of King Arthur, and there are so many legends that revolve around his crew, and all of them involve both kind of chivalry and bravery, but magic. Magic's in everything. And it's the kind of magic as well, and I guess, you know, this was in kind of pagan Britain, um, or at least some of the legends are set in pagan Britain, where there is this concept of magic being everywhere, and there being magic in rocks and trees and, yeah, just caves and things. And to me as a kid growing up in rural England, that just fueled my imagination, where I truly believed, and e even to a much, much too old age, that, uh, that there was magic in certain places. And, you know, it kind of reminded me that when we first got married, one of the very first uh, vacations that we did with our kids was to Cornwall in England, which is where a lot of the uh, Arthurian legends are set. And we went to a place called Dosemary Pool, which is supposed to be, according to legend, where King Arthur threw Excalibur into the pool uh, and the Lady of the Lake's hand drags it down into the waters. However, we went there and it was just beautiful. It was, you know, a gorgeous place, amazing scenery, kind of eerie in the setting a little bit, but just an amazing place. But weeks after we went there, there was an archaeological expedition that actually found some old, I think, Bronze Age weaponry at the bottom of that lake, which to me just made it even more magical. So, yeah, I, I, I just feel very, very connected to those kind of Arthurian myths. And like, I, I guess it was interesting you mentioned American Gods because, you know, the whole thing behind American Gods is you've got these new deity or these old deities coming to the United States, bringing with them their, all of their old traditions, and it creates this melting part of these different old religions. And you can drive around to these innocuous places in the middle of nowhere, and they have some kind of magical energy behind them. And I, I just kind of felt that with the Arthurian myths, that I still love going to places like Tintagel castle where I know it's been almost historically proven as to having nothing to do with the legends of King Arthur but still being there you're kind of climbing these rickety wooden steps up the side of a cliff to get to the castle and the castle is just old ruins and you're overlooking the sea and it there's just something magical about the setting that is just inspirational that I'm a sucker for that all the time. Oh, the other thing that just blew me away about this was the talking fox. Now of course I loved the talking fox in Labyrinth, and he kind of reminded me of that a little bit. But when I was growing up in England, we had a lot of foxes around where I, I grew up, and you could hear them, especially the vixens, they make this just eerie kind of howl. And in, in the trailer, the fox does this kind of wolf-like howl, but in reality, foxes have this really kind of high-pitched squealing howl, like a baby being murdered. <laughs> genuinely scary if you hear it in the middle of the night so I love just seeing an English red fox that was kind of cool in itself but seeing it talking like labyrinth and seeing it howling like a wolf was pretty amazing yeah the last thing I was thinking was I really liked it actually that King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table seem a bit kind of old and gray and just faded and something about the way those scenes seem to be shot as well as their characters and their personalities just seem like they're just waiting for something to happen or for somebody to take over and I really like it that Dev Patel's character the Green Knight actually seems to have some color and some some vibrance and life to him and you know when this creepy demon thing walks in and challenges them he's the only one to just sprightly jump over the table and chop its head off because yeah so I, I really like the comparison between this kind of gray old guard knights and then the green knight who is this newcomer who's out to prove himself it just oh looks like exactly my kind of thing
Well, hey, thank you so much to Storm Shadow for keying me into this. I'd been kind of aware of the teaser a year ago, but just hadn't even twigged what it was. And like I said, with the Dark Knight and the Black Knight and all these other knights going on, I kind of figured it was some superhero thing and didn't even realize what uh, a gold mine was coming to us in just the end of July. So we're going to have to wait until then to see more of it, I suppose. But for now, you're not going to have to wait for very long to see us again, because we will see you next time, friends, tomorrow on the next Dork Trailer Ambush. Peace out, nerds. Bye. Shut up and sit down.